Hi everybody. Very nice to see you all. Uh, thank you for uh, beautiful greetings, beautiful messages. And I'm also very happy to be back on uh, Facebook Live after some time. Um, it has been almost like a two month uh, since uh, I've been uh, uh, Singhi's uh, school holidays or so every year, like usually around this time in India, two months off. So took the two month off. It's like a family retreat, family holiday, and also a pilgrimage. So, so during this time, I was not able to do the Facebook Live or many teachings, but now I'm happy to be back. Um, Singe, uh, we just got back in US and then also uh, he just started the school. So um, all is good. Um, so this today's uh, topic, in, in a way, this topic is also related with my last two months um, in my personal life. So the, the joy of offering the best of who you are. So in a way, as a father, I always felt that it's one of the most important part, as busy I am with my traveling, teaching schedules. One of the thing I, very important for me is to offer this, uh, make sure that I offer my time to my family uh, as much as possible. So this is uh, every year about two months I trying to totally take off um, for family and just only family. And so uh, being very, very important part of uh, my own process. So, so that just, just to mention that. So that's the reason why I have not, was not able to do the Facebook live teaching. So just to say a little bit about why I choose these titles is of course, in, in a way we understand what does that means also in the context of uh, traditional teaching. So we have, uh, I always try to teach something simple, accessible, but it's always based on a deep rooted wisdom tradition, which coming from thousands of years, unbroken, uh, trying to make it simple, but it's connected to the root teachings. So joy of offering, it has something to do with uh, like, uh, I don't know if you have heard about the practice of Chu, Chu practice, uh, which is a practice, uh, the basis of the practice started a very long time, but then the word Chu and this notion of whole movement around 10, 11th century down, and, but the idea of this practice chu is basically chu means cutting through uh, and uh, offering another word chu is also like an offering of body offering of self so uh, giving the best of who you are um, and giving yourself offering yourself uh, it's not necessarily um, that people wants you right I mean uh, some some cases, uh, it's not that people wants you, but we, what we're trying to do in our everyday life, we hold on who we are and our identity. We grasp, we we hold, we don't let go, uh, and uh, and then we suffer, and then we produce conflict, war. All this started as how we hold ourselves, not how we give ourselves. So, so idea of uh, joy of offering, offering or giving has something to do with, ultimate sense, it has something to do with uh, deeper teaching, uh, the teaching of wisdom, deeper teaching, teaching of selflessness. Uh, it's not like, a, you know, offering some somebody something that you don't want. I mean, that... You know, it's, that's not a good offering. You're trying to give somebody something that you don't need, you don't want, 
it's taking your space. You, you want your is ready to time to get rid of, and then you're trying to pack it nicely, making a nice package and giving a gift to somebody. It's okay, but that's not the best kind of offering. Here, offering is not what you don't want, you don't need giving somebody, but in, in a way, it's a contrary, it's a wisdom offering of offering that you like, that you are not able to let go, that you are grasping, you are holding on. As a result, you are suffering and you are producing suffering in others' life too. That is what the wisdom offering is about. So, so offering has something to do with, deeper meaning of offering has something to do with the realization of selflessness, and the more conventional sense of offering has something to do with uh, uh, accumulation or merit of generosity. So basically, uh, as a result, you are also becoming a very generous, very open, and very giving, but deep inside, what you're really trying to do is you're really trying to let go of yourself. So sometime in the, in the world today, people, people are very much like a, um, when get people are get into conflict, and when they are able to punish somebody, or when people are somebody is suffering, when they are able to destroy somebody else's life, then they feel some sense of victory, and that's not the victory. That's not the kind of victory we are talking here. You know, we are we are trying to resolve conflict, but we are not trying to destroy anybody. Uh, in, in a way, we are trying to heal and reconnect and move on. And that's the idea of some sense of offering here. So anyway, so further down, the best of who you are. So, uh, for example, no parents wanted to give pain, suffering, conflict to their children. No parents wants to do that. Every single parent wanted to be open, they wanted to be kind, they wanted to be loving, they wanted to connect with their ch children. But do we succeed? Sometimes we succeed, sometimes it's very challenging. When it's challenging? When, when it's challenging is only time when we are not, when we are identified with our weakness, fear, pain, conflict, and when we are totally become one with our pain, then that's only thing what we have, and that's if you give anything, that's only thing what you're going to give because that's only thing what you have. You don't have the best part of yourself. You don't have the compassion aspect of yourself. You don't have the open aspect of yourself. You have conflict and pain, and in exchange, you end up giving those pain and conflict. More general family is generation to generation. It's like family. Uh, family pain transmissions are sent it down through. At some point, of course, uh, we hope that it, it breaks somewhere, and we hope that it breaks when it's your in your life. At least some some of it break in your life and trying to change something as a family. Uh, and not only that, but also any form of relationship, like uh, you can think about. Um, the guru and student's relationship in a spiritual sense, uh, the right kind of uh, master and student's relationship, uh, the right kind of uh, family relationship, parents and children's relationship, a right kind of uh, couple's relationship, right kind of any friendship, or if any partnership, even in the world of business, that when there is um, a sense of the, any kind of those of relationship, when there is a sense of uh, much more openness, awareness, understanding, and uh, consideration, and then only you are able to give the best aspect of yourself. But any connection, any relationship, what we are really trying to do is you're trying to bring each person is trying to bring the best part of ourselves into the other person's life. Even though sometimes we end up bringing the, the, our own uh, samsaric stories, pain and conflict, not only 
have enough in our own life, but in our relationship with others, we bring in other people's life. But, but that is not a good relationship. What you're trying to bring, what you should try to bring in a good relationship is the best part of yourself. So, and in, in the, when you bring, when one is able to bring the best part of relation, uh, yourself in the relationship, and that relationship, it's last, that relationship is healthy, that relationship brings a lot of happiness, that relationship brings a lot of growth. Any relationship. Of course, some relationship, it's hard. And like in, therefore, some of the uh, Vinaya and the Sutric disciplines, part of renunciations are trying to avoid some of those things. Absolutely, sometimes it's absolutely necessary to uh, kind of run away, retrieve, and, uh, and renounce and let go. But on the other hand, there is, there's not only way to do it, you know, and uh, personally, uh, I can always speak for myself, you know, being, being a husband and being a father and that, that these two brought a lot of growth in my life because it's, I think anybody who raises a child from, you know, from baby to teenage to uh, you, it, it's not easy to just raise children. It's, a, it's an incredible amount of commitment that you have to put there. And these commitment are not always easy, and they, but they are beautiful. There's nothing you wanted to do when you know how beautiful they are than you know, having, having family. So, but that requires also a lot that you wanted to offer your best part in that, in that circle, in that group, in that relationship. You cannot run away from it. You have to totally be in it, merge in it. And that's, I think, is a very important part of the growth. So, so basically what I'm saying is, as a self-development, I think, when you engage in deep relationship as a father, as a husband, as a friend, uh, as a partner, uh, when you are deeply committed to it, engaging with it, and then it has a reward. It has a growth. It has a development. I think those are equally sometimes equally or sometimes more valuable than going to retreat when then avoiding things, running away and renouncing things because renouncing thing is somehow you're not necessarily dealing with the situation. And here these are the opportunity to deal with the situation where this challenges is asks you all the time, demands you, demanding on you, and you have to able to offer, not only offer, but see the joy of offering. And not necessarily sometimes you wash your dishes or something like that. In the kitchen sink, there's a lot of dirty dish. It's not, I don't know, anybody really loves to wash the dishes. Maybe somebody might. But if you sometimes, it only makes me happy sometimes washing dishes. I know it makes somebody else happy. And somebody, important person, it's important member in the family, they are happy about it. The thinking about somebody else's happiness and then the dishwashing becomes a happy, happy uh, task. But otherwise, washing dish itself, I don't think it's that much fun thing to do. So, so what I'm saying here is, in some sense, is, is these are like commitments, engagements, uh, and, and self-development. So I think it's very important. So higher offering of yourself. You know, like uh, when we higher self, uh, your better self, your k kind aspect of yourself, rather than lower self, uh, conflicted self, pain self, engaging in a certain relationship with other people, we know the differences. So, so in these practices, I think it's very important to see how the idea of higher 
offering of higher self. And uh, so going back to our example of practice of chur, while I was saying there's a two traditional sense of practices. One is called chur, uh, basically means cutting through. Cutting through has so much to do with cutting the ego, cutting the uh, self, and, uh, and offering the best part of yourself has to do to do with the let go of that self. So, so it's, in the end, I guess it's always about let go of the self. So uh, that is the uh, the practice of the church, which is really much related with the uh, when you, when we are when we are talking about the um, offering your best best aspect of yourself. The other other practices also in traditionally sense we talk about the mandala offering mandala offering. I'm sure. Many of you who have been uh, practicing uh, like uh, foundational practices, like Ngondra practices, and uh, so whole uh, offering of mandala, which is created, which is symbol is uh, basically you are uh, giving what you possess, uh, what you own, uh, what you see, what you feel, what you know, just basically giving up some sense of everything, um, whole universe, you're offering a whole universe to enlightened beings, you're offering whole thing what you have to enlighten beings, you're, and, and uh, most importantly, you're totally you're giving yourself up to enlightened beings, to the refuge tree. So of course, you know, all of these things can be understood slightly different way for different people. But uh, I think the core part, what, what I'm trying to do here is that practice of chu and the uh, mandala offering, these, these offerings are so much about uh, letting go, the selflessness. And uh, many times in our life, uh, it's a wonderful to let go of things. When you are able to let go of things, then you feel freedom, you feel joy, you feel um, liberation in some sense. sense uh, some sense you feel liberation. And when, whenever we are not uh, offering, giving, uh, we are holding, we're holding back uh, situations, uh, possessions, uh, self, ideas, and when we hold back, and these holding back, uh, it becomes the causes of uh, individual and collective source of sufferings. So basically, that's what it is. So here, in, in, in the practices here, or the teaching here, what we're trying to say here, is each of, in our life, what are the situations where you really feel like you have to let go? Every time, sometime, everybody feels like I have something to say. Yes, you, we all have something to say. And every time we feel I have something right things to say uh, because uh, of I have study, I have analyzed it, I have done research, uh, I have read whatever reasons, your, your reasons to be right, but not necessarily you're looking what other people are thinking or what other other reasons are there, uh, what even what other needs are there, do, do other people do really, do they care about it? It's somehow, uh, we don't think about that. Some, so somehow we always become so, the sense of self becomes so strong about um, any situation, in any situation becomes so strong and that becomes a difficult, that does not allow us to let give something, give something more fuller, more fully, uh, by letting go of oneself. So, maybe think about simple things in life, what makes you feel happy when you are able to give something.
So let's maybe let's look at a little bit in our own life. It's where in your life there are a lot of people need different things, asking different things. There are many situations where you are able to give a lot and when genuinely when you're able to give, it's a, it's a great joy. Sometimes even it's a giving, but genuinely when you don't want it to give, is unconscious resistance is there, becomes a cause of pain. Think about like a, um, how many times when in life the joy of offering, the joy of giving, uh, genuine selfless service services when people do genuinely selfless services to others helping somebody in return there is no expectations of anything think about that how beautiful that is how joyful that is with strangers, with people who you know, with close ones, whenever you are able to give something without expecting something, how joyful that is. And other situations where you are giving a lot, but with resistance, you are aware of how much you give, but you are not aware of internally, unconsciously, how much you resist and you are suffering. And you get confused, maybe why I'm suffering? Why in this relationship there is a suffering? Why in this relationship there is a conflict? Because I, I'm trying to be my best. I have been my best. I'm trying to do good. I have been doing good. I have been giving a lot of my time and energy, this and this and list of things, but where they're coming from, maybe not from the best place. In, in those cases, sometimes it's far better to not give as much as you're giving when they are not coming from right place. Because giving in the end, it should serve either to you or the other person, in the best case, both. how it serves the best to you, because you are experiencing best of yourself. You are experiencing higher aspect of yourself. You're experiencing deeper aspect of yourself. You're connecting with somebody more deep and you are benefiting somebody by giving something. But when we are not giving the best of ourselves, that means we are, we, we identify, we are stuck in our pain, and we feel obligated to do something, give something, and we mechanically, kind of we are giving and doing a lot of things, but they are all not happening right, not coming from right place, not even benefiting somebody. As in some case, in contrary, there is a lot of conflict in the situations. So this is all about the joy of offering when truly, truly, there is a deep joy of giving something when it's coming from right place, from right being, right person, from right space, 
with right understanding, clearly there is a, a deep a sense of joy there. So that's what we were talking. So I think an uh, important part here will be each, each, each of us trying to look at in our own relationship because maybe any given moment in our all, all our life, we are in, always in a relationship. Uh, so, uh, for example, uh, uh, if you look in a, in a particular moment, particular moment in your life, this moment in your life, you are definitely trying to give something. A service. Trying to give a loving kindness to somebody, trying to give a time to aging parents, trying to be kind to dying parents, trying to be supportive to, to a friend who is going through challenges. Trying to be open, giving openness in the situation of conflict. trying to be helpful in, 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 uh, some, to somebody in the situation of challenge. We all are in these situations this moment in our life. Are we giving the best of ourselves? Or are we just doing these virtuous action with a sense of morality, obligation, feeling a lot of challenge and effort, feeling pain, some cases producing conflict. In the end, it did not help what you're doing it seems like uh, it negatively affecting because you're not giving the best part of yourself. They all, it's, everything is happening from the wrong place. So that is, I think, a very important question here. Today's important question is to reflect on that. So I would like to maybe uh, do a short guided meditation here. Um, so we can, uh, trying to relate this understanding of, uh, understanding in our own everyday life here. So, so please sit comfortably. Are you ready to do a short meditation? So first of all, as always, bringing our full attention to our body, your own body. Connecting with your own body. bringing the awareness of your body into a life. And totally effortlessly resting into it.
and bringing connection to your speech. Being fully aware of the silence. Sense of peacefulness, quietness. And again, resting deep into the silence. and bringing your attention to your heart and feel the openness, spaciousness, like a crystal clear sky. It's open, it's luminous. And also be aware that you're not only who is practicing whole cyber sangha this moment from all around the world. We are all in that collective stillness, connected, silence, connected, The spaciousness, the openness in our hearts are connected. These places of stillness, silence, spaciousness, our body, speech and mind are sources of power energy, clarity, positive qualities, our strength. Feel that, allow it. As I said, feel that the power of collective practice, it's only there when you're aware of it. So be aware of it. It's a source of strength. Feel that power strength and then gradually reflect on your life or reflect in your life situations where you are offering 
where you are giving, where you are being generous. But the challenges of generosity, giving, offering, receiving, Maybe it's not working. Maybe it's not joyful. But it can be joyful. It can be a wisdom. Because it can be, giving can be opportunity to let go of self. Not hold back. Giving can be opportunity to accumulate merit of generosity. Giving, offering can be very beneficial to those who need it. But maybe some cases it's not working any of that. There isn't no joy. There's a challenge. Just reflecting on the situation, being aware there is so much more you can open, there's so much more you can give, there's so much joy in giving, sharing, And ultimately, this greatest achievement, gaining, or maybe in some sense, in enlightened sense, gaining everything fully by giving everything away fully. And seeing all the enlightened qualities are perfected in that ability to give everything and anything. continuously reflect on these lines and practices only what makes sense to you not what is not making sense to you don't engage them that is a pattern if you do that is your pattern you have to watch S not not having the eyes to see what is working, always seeing what is not working. Don't do that. So just continuously reflect on and realize more, open more, open up more toward others in the process of offering, giving, sharing, as we listen to the Salavya Mantra.
Thank you. So how was the meditation? So reflecting on our life in a sit one's own life, personal situations where we are trying to offer, give, share, service, helpful. With others, can you see there's a lot of space to improvement? And can you see all this improvement has something to do with self? How much you are able to let go of your ideas, your thoughts, yourself, and finding that deeper strength of openness and able to give from that place. Giving from place being no one. And see how beautiful it is, how joyful it is. Sharing that way, giving that way. How liberating it is for you how beneficial it is for others. How harmonizing, peaceful, healing it is in collective place between people. So I hope you all continue uh, reflecting on these teachings and uh, practices and we never lack uh, opportunity to practice in our everyday life, every given moment, even right now, this very moment. So I hope that all of you bring so much more of who you are into the world, into people that you are closely engaged, loved ones, being the best of yourself to them, offering the best of yourself to them, And, and and seeing this a joy and benef, benef, benefit of doing that. Okay? So all my love and my blessings with all of you. And uh, it's wonderful to be back and wonderful to continue and see you next time.